to have uh, Wendy Glover here today join us. Uh, Wendy has been teaching physical education, child development and leadership courses for the last 23 years in elementary and secondary students in the London, Ontario area. A former U sport soccer player, she's taken her life, lifelong love of sport to help grow and develop young athletes. As a coach, Wendy has been coaching for over 20 years in the community and school sport, typically on the soccer pitches. She's been lucky enough to uh, coach talented teams that have won city and provincial championships along the way. In her teaching practice, Wendy has created an innovative athletic leadership program at her school. The 60 students uh, that she has annually get a chance to teach local elementary schools, get certified as coaches, and organize local tournaments and charitable events. Welcome, Wendy. Thanks for joining us today. Really appreciate you taking the time uh, out of your busy schedule. Hi. Nice to see you, David. Thanks for having me. So, so explain to me uh, a little bit about your athletic leadership program at, uh, at your school. Uh, so this program um, aims to have students apply to it and um, give them opportunities in the community in leadership roles, learn about athletic development, um, as well as help manage their academic and athletic paths as they go through high school. So what they do is they apply uh, about this time of year in grade 10. And once they're accepted, uh, we start to pathway plan them academically and athletically uh, throughout the rest of high school and actually after high school as well. Wow. And, you know, in terms of you say they apply, you know, with the processes and, you know, what does that application process entail for them? So the majority of the time they're, um, they have some experience in sports. So it doesn't have to be a one sport athlete. It could be a multi-sport athlete. Sometimes we have dance cheer other people. The main criteria is that they have a love for sport, um, a dedication to continuing to be in sport or fitness or the health area um, throughout high school and past high school. They also need to have an interest in serving their community in some way as a volunteer and um, also be willing to do extra work. So there is extra work involved in this program. It's not just your typical, you know, take a biology class, you check off the things you get through biology. There's a lot of extra opportunity uh, that are quite um, individualized depending on your effort level in the program. And for uh, all the students that apply, one of the main predictors of success is their learning skills. So their attendance and um, cooperation, um, initiative, uh, all that sort of thing. So yeah. it tends to be a little bit competitive, but we try to get as many kids as we can allow them into it. Um, yep. But we are capped by class sizes. So, so yeah. it, it's become, you know, a quite a lucrative place to be. So why do you think, you know, if it's been so, such a success, obviously just with the kids wanting to be in there, like what has the experiential learning or leadership part of it? Why do you think it's worked so well? What, why are the students just meeting with so much success? Well, and Initially, when we started, we kind of had to talk students into the program. And the first year we had 17 and then 21 and then 25. And now we get 60 per grade. So we're pretty much maxed out like that's it's over 10% of our school. And I think the feedback of the children who are in it back to the other students is how they're so happy to get out of the desk. They're so happy to get out of the school. Um, they actually love testing their leadership skills and seeing how it worked. So it's putting them in roles of um, transitional role. They know they're not adults, but they're not young kids anymore. So by the, when they start to enter the community, they're in 11th and 12th grade and they've had some training. So they feel confident and the feedback is they, they really feel like they've gained skills after each uh, experiential learning situation. Right. And what's that training look like? I mean, you start probably you lay the foundation. Like, what, what, where, where, where do you yep. start when it comes to you have a brand new group during grade 11? Like, what, what's that starting point? What's the jump off yep. point for you guys? So we always do first aid and CPR first, but due to COVID, that's kind of been moved. And we do respect and sport activity leader certification, which is about a four hour certification. And we do high five, which is principles of healthy child development. So those are three kind of big staples we start with because the whole concept of the LEAP program is that we're convinced that every one of them should be able to coach as an adult. 
So our first question is always raise your hand if you've ever had a coach. Um, and of course, they'll raise their hand because they grew up in sport. So our response is, well, then it's in your best interest to give back to the sport as somebody coached you. So you're, you should be able to coach while you're an adult. So the foundation for coaching is understanding ages and stages. So that's the point of the high five, the healthy child development, the respect in sport, clearly respect group. Uh, that's quite common knowledge in sport. Um, and then the first aid and CPR, because that um, enables them to deal with um, situations that happen inevitably in sport, there's injuries. So we kind of start with those three first, yep. and then we add NCCP modules, like the um, we do making headway in sport. Yep. Um, and some of them will branch off into sport specific. So they'll do their soccer development level one or their hockey or et cetera. Yep. And Last year was the first year I partnered with um, the Alliance and Ontario Hockey Federation to have 16, 17 year olds trained in coaching. And we had the course all set up and then COVID happened. So I'm sure you can relate to that. So like the whole idea of getting them specifically trained before they leave high school, before they're 18, yeah. was the original concept was give them confidence so that they're actually able to go out and coach in the community at 18 or 30 yeah. whenever they're done sport because even our elite athletes our kids who go uh d1 or whatever the case may be uh the, the whole point is that we're not telling you not to pursue your sport by any means go s pursue your sport go pursue your academics but realize you have one foot in the community that you can go run a practice in the summer when you're home in your off season or whatever the case may be, like you're certified coaches and you can go contribute. Yeah. Now, do you, 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 you've been doing this program long enough now, probably like, are there any specific stories where you, you have that kid who, you know, is, you know, they come in as an athlete, that's they, they, they define themselves as an athlete, but they yep. come to your program because they like sport. They've done it. They've had success. They've yep. gone off. Maybe they've gone off and played at a higher level, but now they're back coaching. Do you have mm -hmm. any examples of, you know, really, um, except you know examples of community coaches you know that are out there that have come through the program yeah so there's there's many uh, i won't bore you with all yeah. the examples but a, a few that would be um worthy of mention is this program's 10 years old now so the yeah. first five years i was a little bit um like starting a new business the first five years does it fail yeah. i wanted to see whether my theory would actually work so now I'm seeing the results, like the first kids through it are 25, 26. Yeah. And um, what's happened is I'll, I'll speak of a student named Wade. I still speak with him every week. So he was a boy who needed super 12 in high school. He just junior B player in hockey. And he's like, I knew I wasn't going anywhere in hockey. He went to Western for kinesiology and sport management. And he took time doing his degree because he worked at TPH since high school that was one of the experiential learning places i put him yep. so while he was in high school he did co-op there and he also was helping the triple a teams with tryouts and what ended up happening he's still with tph but now he's with the ohl and the nhl guys and he's doing his master's in um uh, master's in science at michigan state and he's the assistant coach at western um and he's now just applying for his phd so he's quite involved in um, coaching in the community, coaching obviously at Western. Like he's an assistant coach at 26, yep. which is pretty good. Yeah, for um, sure. I'll, yeah, and I could use a girl for an example, Amanda Jones. Um, she won national championships at MAC in rugby. Uh, that's after she was playing soccer for the school. So she switched sports. Then she did her master's in um, youth sport development at uh, UBC and became the strength coach for one of the strength coaches at the university. So it's, we kind of timetable them and pathway plan them and support them along the way. Um, but likewise, there's plenty who um, go off and do accounting or engineering yeah. in university or medical school or whatever the case is. Um, but they do know that it's expected of them at some point to either sit on a governing body board or, yep. you know, be a parent coach or yep. something along the way or a non-parent coach. But um, they know that they should have their hand back into youth sports at some point, whenever that happens. So I guess that, that, that kind of leads into the next one question is that, you know, you have those success stories that you just mentioned, but like on a day-to-day mm -hmm. -day level, how are you measuring success for, for the program? That's a great question. It's 
completely different for every person because I've had so many kids now about 23, 24 years old that seemed a bit disinterested. Like they weren't a hundred percent buy-in because they were, let's be honest, some teenagers are immature and they don't realize um, all the advantages of a program like this. And then they'll send me messages like three years later, I just had a boy, he's coaching AAA in the St. Catharines area and he did sport management at Brock. And he's like, I just have to tell you, thank you so much for this. Like I'm coaching and I love it and I'm doing practices and, you know, I went through sport management and I had no idea all the things you were trying to get us to do in high school, how much it really mattered and got me all these jobs and yeah. um, that sort of thing. So some of them, the, like you, you, the measure of success is different for every person. Um, it, it's, and some, you won't even see it right now. It, it won't happen until, you know, I run into them at the mall and they're 30 years old. And they're like, Oh my gosh, I'm actually coaching now. Who knew? Or I had a student write a nutrition program app for athletes. Uh, I had another girl get a job as the head of ringette for their long-term athlete development for ringette Ontario. Yeah. So she was like, I have to tell you, I got this job. And so I didn't even know she was um, like did her masters and was even applying for something like that. So yeah. every person's, I guess, measure is a little bit different. And I mean, it's evaluated on the same way any any academic course would be at your school. I mean, you have learning skills, as you mentioned, and and different types of evaluations, yep. right? Yeah. Yeah. For uh, one thing, I don't do is I don't test. So it's certifications. They're kind of completion rates, and yep. then they do so much reflecting. Like the reflecting, yeah. they don't get out of, and they do not like writing those. A yep. lot of the kids, it's that extra effort, right? Like, why? What did you learn from the tryout that you did today? And it's like, well, some of the parents are screaming and, you know, some of the kids were nervous and they'd always went to the end of the line. I'm like, well, why would they go to the end of the line? Uh, maybe they need to see the drill first. And um, some people say that they're not competitive because they go to the end of the line. They don't care about the sports. I'm like, well, do you really believe that's true that those kids don't care? And so we always are reflecting and having feedback and doing case study after case study, yep. trying to think of. And one of the big things that we cover off in the very beginning is confidentiality. So it's for us to put athletes with all these adults in the community, they have to have full knowledge that we're not judging. Like there's no names mentioned. We don't say, hey, this coach, Johnny Smith did this. It's right. we observed a coach in hockey do this to kids. So I, it's always feedback related. We're not going to cut up coaches we're not going to cut up other people we're just going to say they might be doing the best that they can with the knowledge they have but we we've learned more or something different so how would you handle that so that's the big piece of it is getting their partners in the city to buy in right um has that been a challenge like the, the sport organizations we're not selling them out no like not at all they've been yeah. so good like we're in every sport organization in our city so from volleyball to basketball to soccer to hockey like it's usually met through like a student might say I know a coach can I help him or her or it'll be somebody that I know because yeah. I've been teaching and coaching in the city and um, our school which I'm not really articulating is in the center of the city and we house uh, most of special programs for our our city because of the busing yep. so we have kids in every single community and a bus from up to half hour away of a city of 400,000. So I have the luxury of knowing people in every single neck of the woods yeah. based on these kids where they live. Yep. So, um, which again, um, the kids are very, very trained on appropriate communication and not talking about children's names ever. It's student A did this in gym class. He kicked another kid and how was I supposed to handle that? Or little boy number 15 at the tryout did this. Like, yep. so it's, it, and that's a really important piece is that the, your community partners know that you've got their back. Yeah. Yeah. So what's the feedback been like from the kids? You have 10 groups now, you had 10 cohorts of yep. kids come through this. Yep. Like, what, what's their feedback been of this, what this experience has given to them, uh, you know, in the moment and then beyond? So it depends on the student because I don't have time to track all 400 down, but um, I get a lot of feedback from, kids, especially when they get a job. So I had a boy hired in the CFL and he sent me a nice message and this and that, like those things are periodic, periodically all the time. And um, it's, there's some kids I haven't heard from in three, four years and that's totally fine too. Yeah. So 
mo- always the feedback's positive because they got out of the desk, they got out of the classroom, they got a chance to try to be an adult. And um, we run tournaments, we run sports camps in the summer. And like I had seven kids, for example, that were picked to help run the Hockey Canada Gala that was in London in 2018. And we were on the executive and these kids were in charge of the silent auction. Like it was amazing. They Hockey Canada actually gave them really big jobs and they rose to the challenge and um, they, they can't believe that a governing body trusted them. And the reason the governing body trusted them is because we have references in place about the program and about, I wouldn't give them certain kids that couldn't handle it. Yep. So we've partnered with Hockey Canada and Golf Canada, World Sledge Hockey. Like our partnerships have gotten really big in the last three years because we've partnered with Sport Tourism London and Sport Tourism Canada. So, and again, you don't pick kids for those type of events if they're not just outstanding. So to get more partnerships, you have to be really know your athlete in front of you, what they can handle and what their skill set is. And I guess it comes back. That makes sense. Yeah, no, it doesn't. I think you mentioned the word trust, like that hockey Mm -hmm. Canada trust of the kids. Like, how do you build that trust with your student group? Like, I mean, they all come in with this love of sport, but you're, Mm -hmm. I mean, that's probably the biggest thing that they've got to trust themselves to take the leap to go out and coach kids or run an event or whatever. Like how's, how's that process work? Like how does that take time or, or do you? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It takes time for sure. So they come in and then we start with regular old tasks, like an assignment handed in certifications handed in. I read the reflections when I, I do a lesson on Canadian sport for life and we do a web quest and they have to learn all about LTAD and, and then you start to see people who are interested in certain topics. So I'll do talent identification and talent development, the difference between the two of them and puberty and its effect on sport performance and late bloomer theory. And then you'll have kids' interests really spark up. So I'm like, hey, do you want to get involved in tryouts with some teams? Because you seem really interested in talent identification versus talent development. And they're like, yeah, yeah, I really want to do tryouts. So then I, I reach out for those situations. So kids will express interest in the topics that I'm covering. And then I start to plug them into um, these challenges. So I had a girl, for example, she's a cheerleader at Western now, but she was uh, love Excel, Excel spreadsheets. Like she's one of those girls and she, um, she just so organized it's out of control. And she's like, I made spreadsheets for all of this for you. I'm like, Oh, thanks. I'm not a spreadsheet person. This was great. (laughs) And so I had Spartan race Canada, who's a grad, the person who runs Spartan Race Canada is a grad of our program and uh, she runs the 10 events across Canada. And she's like, I want to repay you for helping me. So I'm going to hire one of your students like that's graduated. Like who, who should I hire? And so I said, this girl, I have two girls. I'll, I'll pass them on to you. And she hired one and she's now uh, since been there two years and they pay her to do all the work at home from her computer but then they fly her to the 10 cities to help with running the events and great. she's only 21 wow, so she's great. been doing that job for two years yeah so yeah. it's like I find situations that match their strengths like I don't put them in situations to yeah. um, like I wouldn't have that girl in particular run a hockey tournament but I have my hockey players who run a tournament because they understand the like the zamboni that's the that's the one one thing that confuses all the people who don't play hockey no you can't just schedule back to back like you have to build in zamboni time yeah. and you can't have the zamboni at the same rink two times in a row it can't be two places at once so it's so the hockey players tend to like to run hockey and yeah. then i'll add some organizers like the organizing type to help them because they're not all um wanting to run the scoring and um the scheduling of the teams, for example, or the marketing campaign. Some of the hockey guys don't want to do the marketing campaign, but I'll have another person do that with them. So it's team building too, recognizing yep. when you're doing an event, you have to uh, assemble a team with complementary skill sets. So I, I guess taking those experiences and, you know, it sounds like, you know, trust building and just making connections mm-hmm. with your students. I'll flip that mm-hmm. to as a coach, like, you know, how would you or how do you, you know, using that experience from the classroom, your own playing experience, how do you build leadership into that coaching and teaching, you know, when you when you, you have a team or a group of athletes? So um, what they do when they get in in 11th grade is we give them opportunities in elementary schools to lead gym classes. So 
they do that twice a week during the school day. So it doesn't affect their sports at night. That's a big thing. We don't mess at night with, with their sports. Yeah. So everything's timetabled around that. And they gain confidence on how to organize kids and say a 40 minute lesson. So once that, um, I, I've, I've noticed that was working so very well on coaching practice. I'm like, well, why aren't I doing this at my coaching practice then? Like, why aren't they helping me choose the badminton team or choose the soccer team or the girls on the team? Cause I coach girls soccer. Why aren't these girls running the practices? Like I've run a million practices on board of running practices, let these kids run practice. So yeah. sometimes I do a captain of the week um, or a leader of the week. And that person has to plan to the practices and get together the water bottles and where's my lineup for the game. And I give them a, like, I call them adult responsibilities, but responsibilities of a coach and where's the lineup sheet. And have we signed everybody out of class yet? Like what's happening. And they all rise to the challenge. Like they yep. really gain confidence. The other people in the team know that um, part of the practice will be run by the team leader of the week. And, uh, I think the feedback and the confidence from the kids being in that position just gives them the confidence that they could coach someday. So if we never give them the opportunity to try with a nice mentor there to say, Hey, when you started that drill, did you notice the girls kept kicking the ball behind the net and they weren't listening? So what could you do to rein them in so that they're not just drilling the balls off the back of the school? So that sort of thing. Well, I guess that's the next thing is would be as a coach. So you, you're mm-hmm. building in these opportunities. Like what's the coach's role? Would you say in supporting that? Like what, what are the, what are some of the specific things a coach needs to do to, to, to give those athletes that opportunity and support them in the best way possible. So before I even unleash them onto these community coaches, because community coaches and school coaches are very different. I've noticed. So the school coaches are really used to having students around and they don't mind letting students help run their practices. It's not as, cutthroat as youth sport because people aren't paying money usually to pay high to play a high school sport so they're much more laid back I guess so to the the teachers tend to be a lot um, more willing to give the kids feedback because they're a teacher they'll say well don't just yell and scream at everybody just say hey one foot on the circle in the middle just say, hey, everybody, one foot on the circle in the middle. Get everybody to come back in. You don't have to yell, hey, everybody, listen. <laughs> Whereas in the community, I can't, I don't feel like it's my responsibility to go tell coaches how to coach because I don't think that will be well received at all. Right. So I'm trying to give the kids the opportunity, say, hey, you're going to go help this hockey team or this basketball team or soccer. However, that coach coaches and whatever role they let you have, it maybe you're just sitting on a bench and you're taking notes. Maybe you're Um, just you know a ball retriever in basketball or your puck pusher in in the corners or something for drills but try to ask uh, if you've built up some confidence after they've seen you a couple times try to ask hey can I run a drill at the next practice so it's all scaffolding like build trust with the coach first do what you're supposed to be doing and then try to maybe ask for little baby steps of responsibility And it depends on whether the athlete knows the coach or not, because often if you know the coach, if it's your neighbor down the street and he's like, sure, you can do all kinds of things. Um, It's different for everyone. So I guess the last piece would be then like in terms of the program and the things you've been able to offer, you know, I guess these athletes who come into your program, just like I said, they define themselves as only athletes. Like what's the biggest thing that you think you've contributed to their development as as people like you know what what's the biggest takeaway you've seen from their growth uh over time oh that's a tough one because i try really hard to kind of be a very holistic coach for them so i look at all the pieces so their mental health um versus the academic career path Um, a big thing is learning about their strengths in school and trying to find um, their next steps, like where they're going to go after high school Uh, as an athlete, it's their potential. So some of them, you know, they're moving away from sport. Like they're not moving up the ladder anymore. They're actually choosing to go down the ladder. And, um, and that's, I guess, acceptance for whatever decisions they're making because they're going through adolescence. So they're going to be constantly, I call it recalculating, Um, I don't use the word quit ever unless they actually quit a team in the middle of a year. So a lot of people say, oh, Mrs. Glover, I quit soccer. 
I'm like, what do you mean you quit? Well, I'm not playing anymore. I, I stopped playing last year. I'm like, well, that's not quitting. Like you just redirected your interests to volleyball or to academic or so it's, it's more um, helping them understand their path through sport, kind of why it happened the way that it did and their path in future towards active for life. How's that going to look different for everybody? And, and lastly is um, to acceptance for their strengths and weaknesses in sport. Cause some of the kids get really upset, especially, um, especially the boys when they realize that they, they couldn't, their strength um, going through puberty early really affects some boys negatively when they're exiting high school and they don't understand why they can't play at the next level. So um, I've noticed that uh, their athletic identity, um, you're not an, you're not a hockey player. I always tell them that you're not a baller. I hear that all the time. No, I'm a baller. No, you're not a baller. You're an athlete that plays basketball. So you're a person who plays sports. So um, really trying to make them, you're a leader. You're an athlete for life. Yeah. So I like the term athlete because that doesn't define a level of um, a, accomplishment. It doesn't say, because I said, well, when are you allowed to call yourself an athlete? Are you an athlete? And like half the class raises their hand. I'm like, anyone's an athlete. If your body can move, you're an athlete. So if you're obviously uncomfortable calling yourself that, you're, when are you allowed to call yourself a hockey player? Single A, double A, triple A, when? University, like NHL, like when are you a hockey player? Where's these special rules that I don't know about? So in, in order to avoid all of that nonsense, they're all athletes. That's why I say the term athlete for life because then their athletic identity is never attacked. That's yeah. I think it's an amazing message to, uh, for kids to understand. I think you're, they struggle sometimes with identity and, mm -hmm. and, um, you know, having the uh, self-awareness to kind of make that connection. If they've got people like yourself kind of helping direct them in that way, it's, uh, that's important. So I really yeah. appreciate you taking the time. It sounds like an amazing program with, uh, you know, uh, some amazing success stories, you know, that have gone through and, and, uh, Obviously, you put a lot of time and effort into creating, uh, as you, you said, a holistic experience for these kids. And, and uh, I love that term, uh, athlete, or I think it's important mm -hmm. for them to uh, to make those connections that when they move on to other areas of sport, uh, whether it's as an administrator or as a, yeah. a, a fan or whatever they may be, uh, they have an obligation to lead 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 those those areas as well. So thanks very much. I really appreciate you telling uh, the, the story of the program and, and, and some of the valuable lessons kids are learning. Great. Thanks for having me, David.